What's up everybody, this is Battlefield Joe 97 here, finally back for new videos for the new year of 2017. And why not talk about the brand new Nintendo Switch console that is coming out in 5 weeks or so, in March 3rd, on a Friday, <laughs> on my break day. And of course, I actually had the experience of actually uh, playing the Nintendo Switch, the various control schemes that it had during a private Nintendo Switch uh, preview tour that Nintendo of America gave me tickets for through email, which of course, full disclosure, I do not have any affiliations with uh, certain employees in Nintendo of America. I was just one of those uh, general consumers that emailed Nintendo of America to say that, hey, you know, could I get some tickets uh, for me and my brother to, you know, try out the new Nintendo Switch system. And of course, when I was at work, I got the email confirmation from Nintendo of America and they gave me tickets, which of course I got the chance to print out the gift to me and my brother. And it was a really fun experience to have uh, actually trying out a new system before it actually would come out. And this was during uh, Saturday, January 14th, which probably is a bit old at this point in time, but reason for that, <laughs> the reason for that taking so long is because I had like mucus uh, filling in my throat, which made me sound like a smoker. Uh, without the uh, help of a voice modular like it was really that bad that I couldn't speak at all So of course it almost took a week or so to get most of the mucus out of my throat through a lot of green tea drinking and a lot of music X which was not really a good thing and I had to work at the exact same time and actually do patrols outside in the cold so it was really it took that long not to mention the amount of movies that I watched, which of course, after this video is uploaded, before I see the new Yu-Gi-Oh! movie, The Dark Side of Dimensions, on Saturday, this Saturday, I'm going to upload my three reviews for three animated films from Japan as the first video for the thoughts and feels of movies. So that's going to be something to look forward to in the channel. But of course, you want my thoughts on the Nintendo Switch itself, which of course, I'll have to talk about the presentation that Nintendo did beforehand, before I went into... Uh, that, pri that private preview tour. I like the presentation itself. They immediately said the general consensus of the price uh, online being paid for, etc., etc. It was a good presentation overall. And this is something that Nintendo should have for the general marketing of the Nintendo Switch so it doesn't uh, repeat the same mistakes as the Wii U did. So that's aside my uh, opinions for the presentation itself. Time for my thoughts on the Switch, which I want to at least uh, show off the goodies. Of course, uh, during the event, Capcom had demo uh, units for Ultra Street Fighter 2, the Final Challengers, which I'll get to in a second for the video itself. Uh, I actually got like five water bottles that have the Nintendo Switch brand uh, slapped on it, which of course, uh, when I go into that line for Rockefeller Center in Nintendo New York, I'm definitely going to be quenching my thirst if, <laughs> if the hype is really that cool. Uh, two pins, which of course there it is, two pins for the Nintendo Switch. Definitely will have this during launch day and whatever the hell this thing is. I don't know what it is, but it, it's it's a Nintendo Switch brand, so that's something else. And there were there were other things as well, like a Nintendo Switch hat, which would have been a really cool thing to have, but they didn't have enough in stock when I was, you know, trying to go through demo units and stuff like that. And, you know, at least I got the water balls and this really, really cool uh, poster for Ultra Street Fighter 2. And yeah, I, I'm jumping about all over the place. You want my thoughts on the system itself and general questions that I was given through social media on Facebook about the system itself. Uh, furthermore, the controller itself, right? How comfortable is the controller that people have gave me questions left to write? It's pretty comfortable. Like if I give the general consensus of the main controller, like with the two Joy-Cons attached to the Joy-Con grip that makes a very small controller, it feels very ergonomic. It's not like a Wii U Pro controller or anything like that. But it definitely did feel really comfortable despite the fact that it's not like this in the range of the Pro Controller, but it's kind of like this. But it doesn't really feel cramped at the exact same time, which of course the games that I've you know, listed in this list that I did use the that kind of control scheme was Skylanders Imaginators, uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, oh no, not Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, that's something else, uh, and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and honestly it was pretty comfortable. And then I thought to myself, what's really the point of buying the Pro Controller if the regular controller that you attach the two Joy-Cons into the, into the Joy-Con grip make a pretty good stand, standard controller, you know? Because with the, the Switch bundles, right, it comes with the system, it comes with the dock, it comes with, like, the tablet screen that, of course, you attach the two Joy-Cons, which are, they're, 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 they're like separate controllers in of themselves. 
and then you have the Joy-Con grip. So you have like three control schemes right off the bat, or like four or five, depending on if you count the Joy-Con uh, controllers as flipping them up in order to have like a control scheme like the Wii Wiimo. So that's a pretty cool thing to have for this kind of system itself. But uh, yeah, and the other general consensus is it really worth the $300. I'll be honest, if you really want to play Breath of the Wall on the go like I do, like when I finish my patrols at my job and then play it on break, yeah, I think it's pretty worth it. And considering how I have my experience playing Breath of the Wild on both the Wii U and the Switch, I can definitely say, from the personal experience, the Switch version runs much better than the Wii U version. At least it didn't have that much frame rate drops compared to the Wii U version. But who knows, the Wii U version that I did play, which of course, on my channel, I did have my experience playing Breath of the Wall on Wii U in the Nintendo New York store. You can go through my channel and have my thoughts on it. And honestly, uh, I played through the exact same uh, scenario that it was on the Wii U demo, except the game ran much smoother. It didn't have that much jacks, even though there is still jacks in the, in the character models. And there were still frame rate drops here or there from the Switch demos that I did play. But overall, much smoother experience compared to the Wii U version. And even in portable mode, which of course is locked to 720p, because the screen is 720p, I definitely think it's still worth it, you know? And I could definitely uh, justify $300 plus just so I can play Zelda on the go. Despite the battery life from what they were clamming, uh, clamoring to be like 2.5 to 6 hours, depending on the software you use, is like kind of horseshit especially in like in a modern day uh, system but overall thanks to the switch now having like USB 2.0 or like regular USB cables and a, uh, a an outlet adapter you have various ways of charging the system and the the tablet itself so definitely is not much of a problem unless of course you're like in an environment that doesn't have a laptop computer or an outlet which of course are fucked <laughs> you know but at least where I work, I definitely have those options, so I'm definitely good on that part. So anyhow, the general questions aside, I'm going to put my thoughts on the games that I did get the chance to play during the Nintendo Switch Preview Tour event. And the first being Splatoon 2, which of course I need to put my thoughts here. It was a missed opportunity in Nintendo's part to not call it Splatoon. It has a nice catchy ring to it, instead of saying Splatoon 2, which of course you're going to say Splatoon 2, Splatoon 2, blah, 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 blah. You see, I, I can't even fucking say it in a repetitive kind of sentence, like Splatoon, blah, 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 blah. It, just, it just doesn't work like that. Anyhow, uh, the thoughts of the gameplay itself, while there were certain uh, gameplay mechanics added in to Splatoon, Spl you know, I'm, I'm just going to say it, Splatoon. <laughs> I didn't really notice any of that until people were like talking to me about it through groups and stuff like that. And honestly, I just played it how it was when I, you know, played Splatoon on my Wii U. And if you like Splatoon from the Wii U and you want to be able to play it on the go, uh, play it with your friends with local co-op and online, I definitely do recommend you get the Switch if you love Splatoon and you want a sequel to it. The second game is the Nintendo Switch exclusive ARMS 2, which of course is the game that utilizes the Joy-Con controllers, the Joy-Con left and the Joy-Con right. And if I were to make a comparison to the Joy-Con, the Joy-Con would be like the Wii Remote Plus 2.0. And they weren't kidding when they said HD Rumble during the presentation because I actually did felt the difference between getting punch, uh, feeling the punch, uh, that I get to my opponents because the HD Rumble really did feel good and not like a regular Rumble that you were that you're accustomed to, let's say from N64 up until uh, current this current generation with PlayStation 4, the Wii U, the Xbox One, etc. You know, this actually did feel really different in the Rumble department. But overall, uh, Arms is a pretty good game. It was actually challenging, and I would make a comparison that ARMS is like an advanced version of Wii Sports Boxing, but you actually have to put in the effort and moving around the environment, actually, okay, it's like an advanced version of Wii Sports Boxing combined with Punch-Out, and if you love both of those games, and you definitely love the personality-driven uh, art style that Splatoon had, then you're definitely going to like ARMS. Definitely, I don't know if I can justify paying 50 or $60 for it, and it definitely does look like a launch title that would have been bundled with the system like any other Nintendo system, like the Wii and the Wii U. And along with like 1-2 Switch, when I never got the chance to play, but you know, I definitely seen demonstrations of it, and it definitely looks uh, pretty fun to have if you're drunk and you're in parties, you know? So that's something to go out of. Overall, ARMS definitely looks excited. Um, it would be really funny if they actually got accepted to be in EVO uh, 2017. <laughs> that would be pretty funny to actually see that actually going on. So anyhow, Skylanders Imaginators, uh, 
you already probably know Skylanders. It's kind of a beat em up, uh, over the top kind of game. It was pretty all right to play with the Joy Con grip. The two Joy Cons attached to the Joy Con grip to make the small regular controller bundle with the system. And, you know, it's one of the launch titles for the system, so if you want to spend $300 plus just to have your kid play that, I, I don't know. I, 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 it, it was a pretty all right uh, game to play. Now, of course, the game that really got me excited to see in the. The, the event was Ultra Street Fighter 2 The Final Challengers and along with Super Bomberman R which I gotta say Konami you may have been full of shit by fucking with Kojima so many times but at least I give you credit for credits due even though Super Bomberman R looks like a budgeted title it definitely looks like it belongs for like what 30 or 40 dollars in digital in the digital like store only I definitely do give credit where credit is due where you actually are bringing in the Hudson IPs which is really cool really cool of you to do Though it kind of sucks, I never got the chance to play Superman Bomber R. I did play numerous matches of Ultra Street Fighter 2, and I will say this: while it does have the graphic graphical style of uh, Street Fighter 2 Hyper HD Remix, which was a game that has now, like God knows, almost a decade ago, uh, you know, on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and I think maybe on PC. I'm not entirely sure. There are certain differences with with, H, uh, with HD Remix on PS3 and 360, but I'm not going to go into that much detail because I'm not really that much into the fighting mechanics that much. Maximilian probably already made a video on that, but it definitely did feel different. It felt like much more fluid with the Pro Controller, which I got to say, even though that Pro Controller is like maybe like, what, 70 or $80 with all the other accessories being so fucking overpriced, that Pro Controller has so much fucking tech in it compared to the Wii U Pro Controller that I swear to God, you can literally knock somebody out and you can leave like a mark and blood coming out of that person's head. Like, I'm dead serious. You can knock somebody out like a crowbar because that is like so much shit put into the tech itself is absolutely uh, astonishing. So yeah, that definitely did feel like a 70 to $80 controller <laughs> for the Pro Controller and definitely might have a lot more uh, battery life compared to the tablet and probably the regular uh, controller. But yeah, Ultra Street Fighter 2, if you love Street Fighter 2 like I do and any other, uh, Ultra Street Fighter 2 definitely is a bust. Though it kind of sucks that it's not a launch title, it's going to be like what, in the middle of 2017 or March or whatever it is, you know? But definitely, if at least it's $40 for a physical copy of it, then yeah, definitely pick it up day one, you know? And of course, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Edition, which of course I got the chance to play it in two control schemes. The one of the Joy-Cons strapped in into a wheel, which of course Nintendo has still not gotten over the fact that you could just release an accessory, slap the controller on it, and there, that's your controller, <laughs> your new controller that has been going on since Mario Kart Wii, uh, transferred to Mario Kart 8 on Wii U, and then Deluxe Edition Mario Kart 8 for the Nintendo Switch itself. And I gotta say... Uh, not only with the HD rumble, but it actually felt really accurate, even more accurate compared to the Wii Remote Plus and even the PlayStation Move itself. Like, I actually was able to slow down the, the cart and accelerate it, like, all over the place through motion controls, and it didn't feel cumbersome. Not once that I felt like, oh, I hate the goddamn motion controls, you know? It actually felt really accurate. It was really cool. And that's something that I really am excited for, at least with the Joy-Con itself. It's a much accurate version of PlayStation Move, and they actually do play their cards right and add in, like, virtual reality to the Nintendo Switch. The Joy-Cons can basically be, like, the PlayStation Move and whatever headset Nintendo puts. Like, God knows, imagine they put the tablet in some headset, and you have to wear it all over the place. That will be fucking hilarious to go for. But you, I can definitely see the potential and the possibilities of what these controllers and the schemes to go for the Nintendo Switch itself. And aside from that, the new and improved battle mode, which of course, much better than the battle mode that we got from the regular Mario Kart 8 on Wii U, I got the chance to play in tablet only. Now of course people were speculating that it's like, or speculating, um, saying that it's like 30 FPS in tablet mode. And honestly, I didn't feel much different in terms of the frame rate itself. It was definitely fun. It was so much better of an experience playing battle mode in the deluxe version of Switch compared to how it is. And, you know, if the if the Switch version of Mario Kart 8 was like maybe $40, I would actually pick it up just for Battle Mode alone because it actually was pretty fun to play with with my brother and all these, and two other people during the event. But, you know, $60, you know. If you were someone who didn't get the chance to play Mario Kart 8, definitely pick this up if you're going to get a Switch. For someone like me who got all the DLC and uh, has it on the Wii U, 
uh, maybe if I feel like wanting to spend more during overtime money, you know. And then of course, uh, Sonic Mania, which I used the Joy-Con, uh, flip it to make it like the NES uh, control scheme. And it was actually pretty comfortable. The Joy-Con uh, flipping on the side wasn't as cumbersome as I thought it was. It was really, really ergonomic to play a 2D platformer like Sonic Mania. And Sonic Mania is really fucking amazing. Like, I cannot wait to pre-order the game and maybe buy it multiple times on PlayStation 4 or Nintendo Switch because it really does feel that Christian Whitehead and the team at Sonic are actually bringing Sonic back uh, for the game itself. That's all I can say about Sonic Mania. It's pretty cool. And, of course, Puyo Puyo uh, Tetris, the crossover game that had, what, has been released already on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita like I think a year or two ago but a Switch version and a localization version of it is coming to the States uh, sometime in 2017 and it was pretty cool I'm not really much of the biggest fan of Puyo Puyo but I do love Tetris to God and it really is a fun game to have with a lot of people I could definitely see this being like a Pokemon puzzly kind of game where it definitely will have a lot of longevity when you're playing with a bunch of people and probably even online mode which would definitely be a really, really cool thing to have, you know? And then, of course, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Everything that I have said about Breath of the Wild, you can go into my previous videos uh, talking about Breath of the Wild. I think, what was it, last year in summertime when I got the chance to play the Wii U E3 build in Nintendo New York. All my opinions on the gameplay are the same as it was in that video, but the differences between the Switch version is, of course, playing in portable mode. It's much smoother. There's still some jazz because, for whatever reason, Nintendo doesn't know how to anti-aliens anti their games, you know? But overall, it was much smooth. There were still a few frame rate drops here or there, but it wasn't as apparent as the Wii U version itself. So definitely, it is, at least in my opinion, being able to play the game on the TV and then on the go and actually... Uh, seeing that it didn't really felt much of a downgrade in portable mode, I definitely do feel that the money that I put for the Nintendo Switch, which I'm currently doing right now in Nintendo New York, will definitely be worth it. And of course, since uh, the Switch's release date is on a Friday and on my break day, once I finish doing my job, sleep, then head to Rockefeller Center and wait to get my uh, Nintendo Switch system. Because it really is something that I feel more excited for the Switch compared to the Wii U. And at least, despite the launch titles being a bit lacking and, you know, Breath of the Wild being the only, like, really hype game to actually be excited for for the Switch itself. At least, looking at the lineup of games uh, from 2017 as a whole, it definitely felt much better than how it is during the Wii U's uh, first year in the market. So definitely, I'm more excited for the Switch compared to the Wii U, and I can at least see the seeds of the Nintendo Switch being a sort of a new era for Nintendo. Miyamoto isn't involved in the hardware, which thank fucking God he is not involved with the hardware. There's like an underrated developer, which I forgot his name, but he definitely uh, put a lot of his soul and effort into previous Nintendo projects, and definitely he's the forerunner for the Nintendo Switch hardware, the Nintendo Switch software, and of course I think he's the director of the new Mario game, which looks absolutely hype as fuck. Uh, Super Mario Odyssey that's coming out in fall 2017. That's definitely going to be a holiday bestseller if Nintendo play your cards right with the Switch. You get a lot of people here and there. And yeah, the Nintendo Switch, at least from its launch titles, I can definitely see being a 3DS kind of situation where the launch seems weak. Uh, a lot of like doom and gloom articles from Nintendo. But hopefully, if they do play their cards right, it could be like the 3DS where launch is weak. But then gradually and gradually the games start to come out and of course a lot of exclusives from Nintendo. It can't be a drought. There needs to be at least one or two games, at least one one or two months apart for each other in order to like steady uh, steady flow the, the library so that people who bought the system like full price will actually get it, you know. And it definitely will feel like an actual investment for the Switch compared to the Wii U itself. Which, of course, I still like the Wii U here or there, but my, my thoughts with the Wii U uh, from my old review, I think from 2014 and 2015, is severely outdated. And definitely, uh, I might do a Redux review of it sometime in March or April of this year. So definitely be on the lookout, or at least persuade me to do that, because I you know keep forgetting these projects to do for this channel itself. But overall, the Nintendo Switch... I'm definitely hyped for it. I definitely see the potential of it. And I, you know, I'm hoping, you know, because Kashima, he's the new president, uh, the new head of the Switch, not Miyamoto or any of the old farts uh, in the system itself. 
Though there is like kind of the off uh, eh kind of situation with the online paying for it and then all those stuff being able to do on the app instead of just on the system. That's kind of iffy for me, but at least I want to see for myself if it actually is this iffy or not. But overall, the Nintendo Switch, I'm definitely hyped for it. I'm putting in the investment for the pre-order in Nintendo New York and Rockefeller Center New York. And yeah, I'm going to be quenching the thirst for the Nintendo Switch March 3rd, 2017. This is Battlefield Joe 97. Catch you guys later. You're John Wayne. Hey, pretty lady, I'll fix your wagon. Too far? Never. Never. We're just getting warmed up. And if you think this is silly, you have no idea what's coming after this. So stick around for that. While we're waiting for the game to finally set up, I want you all to uh, admire Zach the Kid and Wild Shane. Here we go. All right, guys. It's all about staring at your opponent, channeling your inner Western. This is the Avenue of America's only one is worthy enough to remain on that stage. Here we go. Fire! Oh, that was quick. Who's it gonna be? Last man standing is... Oh! The bearded wonder! Ladies and gentlemen! I told you, that beard is intimidating. In point six versus point six six. That's pretty incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, give both these dudes a nice round of applause.